All right, so the time is 3.56 in the morning, right before four, already hitting the trail. And the weather is just awesome out here. It's about probably 59, 60 degrees, just around there. And uh, I am definitely excited for the day. Hey guys, Western Mine Detective here, coming at you with another mine exploring video. So right now, I am going on a crazy hike. Uh, so far I've done 7.2 miles almost. And the elevation is around 7,000, upper 7,000 feet. So the peak right behind here is uh, actually an 8,000 footer. And then uh, right now I'm gonna be traversing on the appropriately named Gunsight Notch as it resembles a Gunsight. Kind of in the shape of a W. Can't really tell since we're uh, going over it, but hopefully I could get some cool pics uh, when I get to the mine site, which is down over there somewhere. I'll show you guys the ridge when I get closer. But yeah, it's uh, super rocky, and uh, I think I'm going to be doing some class 3 scrambling, maybe some uh, low class 4. But yeah, right now it's not too bad. Once we get up there, it might be a little more hairy. So yeah, I'll probably uh, put my helmet on. Yeah, it is uh, one hell of a fall off either side. A lot more trees on this side. It's actually a plane up there. Seems that they uh, like taking this flight path. All right, you know what they say, safety first. Doesn't matter how cool you look when you're out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so uh, here's a look at what I'm going through right now. I think I'll put the GoPro on my head. It'd be pretty cool uh, perspective climbing over these rocks. All right, so while I'm uh, scrambling over these rocks, I will give a little overview on today's video and the mine. So this particular mine is, in my opinion, one of the most uh, remote ones to get to in this particular range. Um, and it was worked intermittently between 1921 and I believe 1938. And it sits at about the 7,000 foot level. And uh, yeah, I'm just hoping that I can uh, find the mill site. And uh, I heard there's a pretty intact stove and uh, some other really cool stuff up there. So hopefully on this uh, pretty dang sunny day, I can get up there. I brought about five liters of liquids. Oh, let's see which way I should go. So I should be pretty good at this point. After hiking seven miles, uh, I have drank about maybe, I'd say close to two liters. So once I get about halfway, I would say, once I finish my uh, hydration bladder, I should uh, definitely consider oh, turning around. All right. Yeah, this scram scrambling isn't uh, too bad, actually. We're getting there. Oh, and I forgot to mention uh, pretty much any way that you try to get to this mine, whether it's from uh, either peak or from the bottom, you're looking at over 16 miles 
Um, in this instance, I believe it's about, the total ascent is like 8,000 feet or something like that. So yeah, it's uh, pretty gnarly, definitely a neat killer. Uh, I just hope on the way back, my knees aren't uh, messed up because sometimes they do this thing where they spasm out. They've been pretty good lately, so hopefully since I stretched and all that, I'm good. Looks like there's a cache or something here. Maybe that's just an old can. Hmm. Let me try to open that and see if there's like a paper or something. Look at this super exposed section of trail. Wow, this is just crazy. Oh yeah, this is where it gets good. Yeah, these are some really, really crumbly rocks, as you can see. So definitely got to be careful, one step at a time. All right, I just had to show you guys this massive boulder. This thing must weigh 20 tons or something like that. I mean, just look at it. And it keeps going down that way too. But yeah, still going over some sketchy shit. And that's where I just came from. I will need my hands free for this. Yeah, continues down. All right, there's that huge boulder, bottom side of it. And there's the chute that I just came down. Kind of hard to believe. But imagine one of these days it's probably gonna break off. Got a couple cracks actually. That would make one hell of a sound. And we are continuing down. Now this looks like the fun part. Look at this rock. And look at the drop. Damn. From this point, it's like a good 80 feet or so. Oh yeah. Uh, looks better around this way. Ah. 
Now that was fun. <laughs> All right. Really cool white rocks right here. Here's a pretty gnarly section of rock. Now as to if this goes down like a roller coaster, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, I could definitely climb down that. Alright. looking at the jagged rocks that I just climbed down. That's definitely going to be sketchy going back up. I mean, it was sketchy going down. And then a uh, pretty cool dead tree right there. And I'm almost to my target. So this ridge right here, I'm going to plan on going down that scree pile. Hopefully I can find the mine. Alright guys, so here's an update. Uh, this kind of sucks. So, I had to jury rig the crap out of my uh, crappy hiking boot because uh, the bottom came off. So, hopefully, since I tied it really tight and wrapped it around the bottom, hopefully it stays. But if not, I'm gonna have one hell of a time hiking back and I just passed the gun sight that was pretty awesome so I'm getting pretty close to where I want to start going down I'm gonna take that general route and then the mine should be somewhere in that general vicinity so about a minute later I dropped my binox and they are just like way down there in the bushes so I do not feel like retrieving them <laughs> my luck has not been too good on this trip but you know what I'm feeling pretty confident that I'll find at least uh, you know some remnants from this mine I, I have a feeling all right, super excited, headed down towards the mine. Uh, super loose, uh, dirt and scree all around, lots of yuccas, pine trees, but obviously the amazing views would make this trip worth it, even if I didn't make it to the mine. 
it's definitely going to be uh, tough going back up, but if I can find this mine, that would just give me that confident boost. Alright guys, so I finally made it to the scree. Uh, going through all that, there's just so many manzanita bushes and thorn bushes and yuccas. And uh, yeah, definitely hurt. I am bleeding just a little bit on my legs. But, like I said, we're on the scree. We should be getting close. I'm hoping uh, that I'll come across a cable or something somewhere over there here's a way awesome shot of a gun sight notch that was probably the sketchiest part of that whole traverse but man that's that's crazy that I came from there but uh, yeah, you can see the W shape right there. Yeah, that's pretty dang awesome. And right now I'm just uh, going over all this scree. And just hoping that very soon I find something. It could be anything. That is my goal, my objective. I just want to find one rusty piece of metal and I would be satisfied. I just want to confirm the approximate location of this mine. Now, if I actually get to see the mine itself, that would be awesome. Hell yeah, guys. I <laughs> I can't believe I actually found this. Like, I was giving up hope. I mean, I literally went down like 300 or 400 feet of straight scree. And uh, I can see that there's rail sticking out and I think I see an engine actually. Let's get a closer look. This is awesome. Hell yeah. Oh man. Yes. Look at all this. There's so much metal. There's even a shovel. Hell yeah. Look at that. Nice riveted 1920s, 1930s shovel. And then it looks like there's a buried, uh, that looks like an accumulator. You can still see that the uh, pipe is still connected to it. And then right here, this is a super intact, uh, what is that, like a six cylinder? Oh man, but just look at how buried this thing is. Yeah, this thing's gonna be gone within probably a decade. Uh, some corrugated metal all over some timber and like I said the rail is jutting out like that. That is awesome. So yeah, I mean this was probably the mine right here. Long collapsed. And then there's Looks like there's a part of like an engine block or something down there. There's another piece down there. This looks like a maybe maybe like a cyanide tank or leaching tank made out of uh, 
metal siding and there's more rail here So this probably would have led to maybe the waste rock pile. Oh. Yep, look at this. Continues on. So awesome. Oh man, it just keeps going. There's a section here. I see another section right here. Yeah. Runs into the tree. Oh yeah. And it still keeps going. Will it ever end? <laughs> what the heck? I don't think I've ever seen a rail go this far. At least in this range. And then here's the first... Uh, what the hell is that? Oh! Uh, uh, Track tie, rail tie. Man, <laughs> all this excitement got me forgetting stuff, and there's a spike in there too. Pretty cool. And it keeps going. And it looks like it used to keep going, but it just got. Ooh. It just got washed out. There's another section right there. Now isn't that amazing? <laughs> there might be something else over there. And I know there's more further down. This is exciting, hell yeah. All right, guys, so as you know, sometimes I like to do a little bit of digging. Uh, that's why I'm called the Western Mine Detective. And uh, apparently, right behind this engine, uh, I found a plaque. I'll read that to you after I uncover this. Wow, there is just so much up in here. Okay, so I uncovered that. And then we got this piece. But that plaque, on the top it says names of air compressor oils. And then it states a long list of them. Blah, blah, blah. I see Shell Company, Sinclair, Standard Oil Company, etc., etc. And then at the way bottom, I can read. Gardner Denver Company, based out of Quincy, Illinois, USA. So apparently, apparently, uh, this engine powered that compressor. Who would have thought that there's a compressor in that uh, four foot heap of leaves and dirt and all the brush? That is just awesome. So hopefully on like a future explore where I'm able to camp, I would love to dig that baby out because that would just be so awesome to see. What a cool find. All right guys, so there's the engine compressor, stack stone wall, shovel, all that stuff. And here's that uh, engine block that I was talking about. Pretty cool. There's a number right here, it looks like 315. 
And then right next to it, uh, we have a riveted, what, what, oh, what, oh, I'm slipping. <laughs> what looks to me like a skip car, but it might just be a very, um, very low profile uh, four car. I do not see where the wheels would have been though. But yeah, definitely from the 1920s or so. Got those rivets in it. Lots of awesome stuff out here. All right guys, so there's the rail that's hanging off the edge. I'm guessing that the ore car that I found, the low profile one, that would have probably ran along here and then I actually see a cable connected to that tree right over there. I'll show you that right now. So they would have probably brought the ore over and then transported it via ore bucket and then transported it way up the side of the mountain. And there's another, oh, it is really slippery. There's another uh, section of a rail right here, and it seems to be going up that way, so. Hmm. Oh, my feet are going to hurt. <laughs> but you know what? It was worth it. <laughs> and here's another rail, damn. This was quite the operation. <laughs> Lots going on. See, so yeah, here's a cable. It's all wrapped around this tree. You can tell it's probably been here for quite a while. And continues that way. There's one that goes off this way. Um. Oh wow! I see more rails sticking out like jutting out like 10 feet and then yeah there's there's a bunch going on here oh it's a trestle sick all right that makes sense oh and below that looks like a either a tram station or ore bin <laughs> look at all this cable going across and up huh so yeah that rail definitely continued on all the way to that trestle that makes sense oh wow oh ain't that a shame it's all collapsed now damn i've seen pictures of this one where pictures and videos where it was uh, slightly tilting but man that is sad to see and at least the stacked rocks still there and this one lone rail other ones right there so yeah the rail would have went all the way to there and then the ore car would have dumped the ore into this uh, I'm guessing this is an ore bin that would make sense and then uh, from here it probably would be transported up the mountain. Either up or down the mountain, I don't know. But there's a, you can see this cable going way up, so I would guess up. So let's take a closer look at this Orban. And this will probably be the last clip because is getting late and I've got an eight or nine mile hike ahead of me so but yeah you could definitely tell this thing is ancient just look at those natural raw timbers they didn't even care they just used this whole tree and that whole tree as supports how ingenious of them huh yeah. Oh wow, and it looks like there's still an ore bucket or two down here. 
fine. Man. So remote. Whenever I go to these type of sites, the thing that goes through my head the most is like, this operation was one or many men's dreams, you know, and were they fulfilled? Seems like it. Seems like a pretty successful operation. Super remote, but... So yeah, that's awesome. It's still got the, uh, the hook right here, where it would have hung on the cable. And it's still got the pulley, pulley wheel. And it's not even rotted out. That is just one amazing find. And then this right here looks to be the chute. So it looks like it was a two-sided chute. There's one here, one here. Just way more cable scattered all around. Uh, another pulley wheel right here. That's still connected to this uh, ore bucket. And there is just still a cable continuing down the mountain for probably 300, 400 feet. I'd love to do that today, but unfortunately, I do not want to be out here super duper late. Get that another wheel, another pulley wheel. All right, so right now I'm on this uh, stacked stone foundation for this trestle. Uh, right here you got this big old log that they used as a rail tie. And there's the one lonesome rail heading off. So yeah, there's all the uh, track ties and such that have collapsed in the strip of rail. And there is a beautiful look out towards the mountains. So uh, I might as well finish the video here because I know once I get to the car, uh, I'm probably going to take like a two hour nap or something. <laughs> and then I'll start driving. But uh, yeah, this was one hell of an explore. I was, uh, I was not sure I was going to make it to this particular one today because there were just so many... Uh, hardships going on. I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, but yeah, this was one amazing explore. Uh, hopefully if I come back, uh, in the future, I get to, uh, check out the mill, which is somewhere down there, a couple hundred feet. But yeah, I mean, it was awesome. Highlights for the day was definitely, uh, the engine, the trestle and the ore bin. Oh, and also the compressor behind the engine. That was uh, definitely unexpected. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.